Welcome guys, I hope you like that lovely drone footage of Mallory Park. Now my track day vlogs are a little bit long, so what I like to do is do this index intro uh, type of thing where I tell you what I'm going to be showcasing in this vlog. So I divide the vlog into different chapters so you can come back to this video and watch what you really want to watch, whether it's a product review or something to learn. My videos have got a bit of entertainment value, a little bit of cinematic stuff, and always something you can learn from. So I really hope you, you get something out of this. Now, this video is a little bit more track focused in terms of more track riding because the weather was fantastic. Now, last video, Silverstone was a bit more banter. It, it rained, so I showcased a lot of bikes. Neil McKenzie was there, Taylor McKenzie, a little bit of interviews there. So if you, if you haven't watched that, you can click the link in the description later on. Okay, let me tell you what I'll be showcasing in this vlog. It's going to be very interesting. Number one, it's going to be uh, a little bit of intro at the racetrack. Then I'll show you why this track was so popular in the 60s and the 70s. So a bit of cinematics there. Then we move on to uh, kind of session maybe three and four from the morning. One and two I didn't film. It was just kind of boring. And then we move on to some British Superstock champions who will give you some uh, kind of their input into why this track is so popular among riders. Then we move on to the afternoon uh, session. I'll show you some sessions, some good laps and also some overtaking and also some kind of little mini battles where uh, I overtook people or certain people overtook me and how beautifully people overtake in such a short circuit and what you can learn from it. Real good 360 degree stuff and, and I'll try to make it as much entertaining as possible. Then we move on to uh, the afternoon. I'll show you a little bit of cinematics of the track uh, in the lunchtime. Then I'll also show you some afternoon sessions. Then we move on to the kind of 80s and the 90s and the noughties, what this track was like in that time. So have some patience with me, you'll really enjoy this footage. It's taken me a lot of hard work to get all this footage together for you. Then, very important part of the video, I'm going to showcase um, something new. So normally I show you how you can improve your track riding using the Track Day Genius app. You know, it tells you where you're slow, where you're fast. This time I've actually got a proper Mallory Park guru, Mike the Spike Edwards, who's gonna uh, do a five to seven minute session, a little bit of a snapshot of a 45 minute long video, which I will show you a week later. But this little snapshot will show you that tricky part of the section, sector three, and how you can improve. So there's a lot in this video. I really hope you enjoy it. Please get yourself a cup of tea, put this video on the television, you'll really enjoy it. Okay, let's go to the track now to have a proper intro. Welcome everyone to Chasing Tents. My name is Sabi. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. You find me at beautiful, serene Mallory Park. The last time I could hear birds chirping in the middle of lunchtime on a track day was Cadwell Park. And I have not been to Mallory Park for three years. And look at the lake in the background, just to show you how beautiful this track is. Now, not only this track is beautiful, this track is also very meaningful. There is a lot of amazing uh, turns and a lot of a lot of British superbike riders or British superstock riders love this racetrack because it's if you are quick it's about one minute lap um, and in that one minute uh, you can learn so much you can improve consistently you can keep improving that one turn which you struggle with whether it's a, a fast right hander or a, a kind of a, a slalom type of turn or or a, a tight U turn whatever is your uh, uh, weak link uh, you can improve on that. And that's why I really, really love this track. I mean, I came here three years ago when I never had a trailer. I had an, I just had a road bike and, uh, and I didn't even know much about tire pressures. But uh, now it just, uh, you know, it just feels amazing to be back here. I, 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 I just don't know why I didn't come here more often. So sometimes we just neglect these beautiful gems we've got in this amazing country we live in. And we really need to make the most of these smaller circuits, whether it's uh, circuits like Blitton Park or, or kind of, uh, is it Dali Moor and stuff like that, or Mallory Park. They are absolutely beautiful when you really want to improve those uh, track skills. Okay, guys, let me show you some cinematic footage of this circuit, and then we'll come back and we'll go through the track day, uh, a kind of session by session, or maybe morning and then afternoon session.
Welcome back guys, I hope you liked that footage. So uh, morning session is already gone. I'm absolutely knackered because the humidity is quite high today. Uh, on the other side, um, in terms of uh, performance stuff, I think I'm around one minute. Um, I'll have to see, I'm not uh, monitoring my lap times today, all because of my fault, because I did not download Mallory Park Circuit to my i2M dash. I'm lazy. A lot of people think I'm quite organized with these videos and stuff like that, and I'm quite good, but I sometimes just forget to do basic stuff. Now, on the other side, that's why sometimes I like that AIM Solo DL. So if you've got an AIM Solo DL, you should be so proud of yourself, because it's, it's one of those gadgets where you turn it on and it knows which circuit you're at. So um, I think I'm going to try to see if I, I can get the I2M to learn the track and stuff like that. But I, honestly, I don't want to waste my time doing all this. I really want to have some fun. You really, really want to perform well, get the lines right, speak to, Dean Ellison is here, speak to some uh, uh, you know, people who know their stuff and, and take it from there. Uh, let me tell you, um, after me, let me show you some morning footage now and then we'll talk about uh, different uh, stuff like tyres and brakes, how is everything getting along? Okay guys, one thing I really wanted to mention is about this racetrack. A lot of people judge a racetrack by just the layout. For example, Brands Indy or even this racetrack. They just think, ah, uh, you know, it looks a bit boring. However, there is a reason this track was historically so important. You know, famous riders like Mike Hailwood, Barry Sheen, a lot of other riders, other riders on their two-stroke machines were just giving it everything they've got. Here, you know, it's, it's a beautiful track. So what I really wanted to do is get some people involved in this video, people who know, uh, you know, what they're talking about, people who ride really well, and why a lot of BSB riders, British Superstock riders, and other races, uh, BMZ or any other championship, why they love this track so much. So let's hear some, for, from some really important people who know what they're really talking about when it comes to riding. Hey, Abby, good to hear from you, mate. Mallory Park's a really cool circuit. From a riding point of view, you've got the tight hairpin, the chicane, some really fast flowing sections, so it really helps you improve as a rider on a variety of different corners. And also from a bike setup point of view, because you've got such a variety of corners, it helps get the bike set up for all different tracks in the UK as well. Hey, how's it going? It's Billy McConnell. Um, yeah, let's talk Mallory Park. Mallory Park is uh, an awesome little track. I love it because it's six miles away from my house. Uh, holds a special place in my heart because it was actually my first race over in the UK um, at Mallory. So um, 
Uh, for, a, for a setup point of view, we always used to do the ACU days every Wednesday, which um, unfortunately they're not about anymore. It used to be the afternoon session, so it used to be for cars in the morning, then from one o'clock onwards used to be bikes. Uh, best thing I like about uh, Mallory when we get a new bike is um, we, we always used to do a shakedown there or end of year test or whatever for the next year. Uh, you've got Gerard's, which is a massive long right-hand corner where you can actually make your changes. And you can actually really feel what the bike's doing through the seat and through everything where normally you're most of the other tracks you're sort of in and you're out of the corner. So Mallory, you get that long sweeping corner where you can really you know, accelerate, decelerate, and just try to feel what the rear end of the bike's doing and hopefully the front's holding in there. And then you've got Duena's, the tight left-right chicane where you can flick it and feel that. And then you've got the hairpin as well, which is always good just to get the braking markers and, and really try to slam the front on and see how fast it dives down. And then Devil's Elbow coming down where it sort of breaks away um, as, a, as, a, as a camber drops away. You can really try to, if the bike really skates around there, so you can really try to search for grip around there. Um, yeah, Mallory's six miles down from my house, so I love testing there because it takes me no time to get there. So Mallory Park, awesome track, been around forever. Spewing that the locals whinge about the noise because we should be using it more often. Hi, Abby. Uh, thanks for your invite to um, share some of my memories of uh, good old Mallory Park. What a place that is. Um, it used to be back in the day, it used to be something very special. They had, uh, they had a lot of ACU afternoon uh, test days where you could literally like rock up, pay a small fee. If you had an ACU license, you could go out and have a practice. It was every Wednesday. This is before the world went mad and got annoyed with noise pollution and this and that. They had a brilliant calf there run by a couple of old biddies. Um, they used to do great pine chips, probably ate too many of them over the years, but, um, yeah, Mallory, it's a good, it's a good little place actually. Um, it it was really good for testing and stuff. My favourite memories of Mallory Park, <coughs> um, probably my favourite, my favourite would be Billy McConnell. Billy McConnell was this crazy Australian kid that no one knew or heard of, and um, he turned up. Live on a pig farm or something, live on a pig farm or something, and uh, with some dodgy van salesman, Fat Astro, Astro, Astro Van or something like that, Fat Stewart, I think his name is Fat Stewart. Anyway, he lived with him, I think he was being subjected to make, I think he had to live with the pigs. Anyway, this kid turns up, learns Mallory Park on a Wednesday afternoon for a guy called Mickey G, Crazy Mickey G, um, on an Astro. Astro R1 or, or I don't know, some sort of R1 blown someone. And uh, yeah, it was Superstock Cup. Peter Hickman was leading the championship that year. Same championship I won in 2006, actually. And um, I think Billy won it by 30 seconds. He, um, he certainly showed people what he could do. Now, Peter Hickman was no slouch, as people probably know. Uh, but Bill turned up and he wiped the floor with it. He, he properly did well that weekend, so much so that he got, he actually got Johnny Ray's ride, I think, off the back of that. Johnny Ray got injured at um, Campbell Park on the Red Bull Honda, and, um, and Bill ended up on that. Um, I think he had a tough year, first year in, in BSB, and first year uh, learning the tracks on a full super sport bike. I think you have to ask Bill what happened at Donington Park, coming out of the Melbourne Loop after the race, that's quite a funny story. But uh, yeah, Mallory Park's a good little place. Wow, not only that was funny, but so, so interesting. Thank you, Bob, Billy, and also Levi. Really, really appreciate your input. Guys, and this is what I was trying to say earlier in the intro, that if these guys had so much practice and so much fun in a short circuit like that, because you can do lap after lap after lap and improve your skills, imagine how much we can learn from it. Anyways, let's move on to some of my laps. Now, I'm going to show you uh, the session just before lunch so I think this was my surprisingly even though the sun hadn't come out yet this was my best lap of the day one minute dead uh, point one uh, so uh, I, I can't believe it you know I thought the best time would be at the end of the day I didn't have a, a my lap timer wasn't working I was just rely, relying on GPS uh, of the GoPro so I just when I came home then I just looked at my lap times it was just one minute one minute one minute one minute one it was just unbelievable anyways we'll talk about that later let's show you this uh, kind of session and maybe one or two lap from it and put this on TV so you can see all the little kind of numbers uh, and hope you enjoy it
I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Now it's lunchtime at Mallory Park, so let's show you some lunchtime footage of this lovely little track. Welcome back guys, now without further ado, let's have a look at another session. This is a session after lunchtime. I hope you enjoyed this track footage. So that was a session straight after lunch and a bit rusty, probably the lap time showed that as well. Now I've had my sandwiches and my crisps and Lucas Aid and that probably makes you a bit less agile. And I say this to a lot of people, no point drinking eight liters of water, which a mistake I made that day. I was drinking liters after liter of water and kept going to the loo. You gotta drink your water three, four, five days before your track day, cause that then is retained in your body better than just flushing your system, uh, you know, uh, which is absolutely useless. Anyways, a few people came to see me on that track day and there were some uh, kind of slightly controversial people, I should say, mostly motorbikes, who is another YouTube uh, channel like myself. And also uh, Martin Thornley, who has a, a tiny little YouTube channel called uh, Winning Interest. A lovely chap. You know, I followed him quite a lot on the track. Mine has, and his pace uh, were quite similar. And this, and you know what, this was a bit of a reality check as well and that's why I include um, Mike the Spike Edwards at the end of the video because my bike is fully loaded top of the range Olin's carbon wheels great brakes um, you know all sorts uh, you know and Martin was on a old fire blade uh, you know a quick shifter but no blipper uh, you know and uh, just a just a normal uh, standard bike nothing hi-fi and he was still kind of one minute one as well and I was one minute one one minute one minute one one minute and he was kind of similar and that got me thinking, you know, so it's, it's a lot about skills and sometimes when you are stuck at a certain performance point, even if, if, if it's not lap time, but your own personal 
kind of progression is stopped, then you need to take help from the gurus like Dean Ellison, you know, Dale Sykes or Mike the Spike Edwards, you know, there's Simon Crafer, there's loads of people out there, you know, uh, what's that, uh, they're not so fast people, they're fantastic, you know, so there's loads of help available out there. So let me show you some uh, footage of me uh, behind lovely Martin Thornley, uh, you know, winning Inters and we had some great uh, battle and some 360 degree footage where we were chasing each other and then I'll show you uh, after this clip I'll show you some overtakes of what other people did on me and myself as well which is quite interesting So I hope you found that interesting guys. There are two main reasons why I showed you that because it's very important for you. If you really want to enjoy your track day, it's very important for you to book a particular track day group, advanced, novice, inters, whatever, where you belong in terms of your pace. Then only you're going to really have a good time. Otherwise, you're going to be tentative. People are going to be overtaking you left, right, center or undertaking you or you uh, are probably too fast for the group blah 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 anyways i actually made a vlog in 2019 at cadwell park where i being a fast group rider i had just come from Harreth and two portomeos and also did a great donnington uh, day and i booked myself in a novice group so all advanced groups and then i booked myself in novice group at cadwell park and in that vlog i really show you what happens when a fast group guy kind of ends up in the wrong group. I mean, in my case, deliberately, because I got a bit intimidated by that track. But I really show in a very good way what to do and not panic. Uh, you know, so do watch that if you get time. I'll leave a link in the description. Second reason I really wanted to show you this clip is mainly for Martin. Martin, you are ready for the fast group, mate. The No Limits instructor told you this as well. 
and your lap time show that as well so yeah and thirdly guys if you were on that Mallory Park track day and you want to see if you were uh, you know a bit of uh, more footage Martin uh, on his little tiny YouTube channel called Winning Inters uh, puts full uh, kind of uh, session videos so not like me I do kind of bits and bobs here and there he puts full sessions so you might be able to spot yourself on that uh, on that uh, YouTube channel. Martin hasn't told me to do this. I'm just doing this because there are so many people who want to see themselves on the track. Anyways, let's move on to the next part of the video, which is very special for me because I, it took me hours and hours to get the footage and make this. This is 80s, 90s and the noughties. Uh, how Mallory Park was uh, part of BSB, part of so many series. Even David Coulthard is in the clip. So, Please watch this. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. I've really worked hard on this. And there are some more interesting bits uh, in the vlog coming, uh, especially with Mike Edwards and some overtakes and my last session of the day. Welcome back guys, I hope you really enjoyed that. For me, that was so interesting. Even making such a kind of cinematic uh, reels, I kind of really enjoyed that because, I mean, the first section of that clip was David Coulthard. I mean, I couldn't believe it. David Coulthard at Mallory Park. I'm, I'm a big kind of Formula One fan from the past. Not, not these days, I don't like these hybrid engines. I love the old V10. So let me now show you some overtakes. Now, in a lot of my vlogs, I show me overtaking a Ducati V4 or, or some other exotic bike. This time, I want to show you overtakes from a different angle. Now, when you are, uh, this is me, okay, I'm speaking for myself. When I was in novice group and interest group uh, two, three years ago, 
I, someone used to overtake me and I used to have this red miss. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take him. I think in advanced group with that lovely gaps and that lovely pace you're going, you really learn to not only enjoy, uh, you know, and uh, learn from other people as well. Now, in this track day, there were some fast people, uh, you know, who overtook me very safely. It was brilliant to see them. So what I do now is when these people overtake me, I tend to tend to observe them for the next two, three corners because then they're gone if they're too fast and then learn from that. So that's what I really found quite interesting. So in this next clip, I'll show you uh, maybe some overtakes I made and most importantly, some people who overtook me and how beautifully they overtook me. So a bit of 360 degree footage. I hope you like it. And people, um, I, I don't know these uh, people personally. So if you are watching it, I hope you enjoy it as well. <laughs> Welcome back guys, I'm actually recording this clip after being awake all night and editing the video. The rest of the clips are from a night before and the video is already 55 minutes, you guys are going to kill me. Anyways, I really wanted to add this part because it really uh, suits with the overtaking bit. So two things I really learned with those people overtaking me or if I overtook some people is the main thing on this track I learned that day was dead time was very, very important. Now, the first time I ever heard of dead time was watching a video of Richard Hammond uh, trying Fernando Alonso's V10 2006 Formula One car. And the Renault engineer told Richard Hammond that you've got too much dead time half a second that was and Richard was like what half a second he goes that's too much so that dead time is you doing nothing really kind of hanging around between uh, break and uh, kind of uh, taking your turn or kind of deciding when to break so that kind of time where you're doing nothing uh, before a turn is really dead time so in this track I learned that a little bit of dead time can cost you a lot of feet between you uh, and other people so uh, that was one thing and also secondly one thing I also learned is you can't really, on this track, it's such a narrow track, you can't really surprise people, you can't dive bomb them really, you've got to be really clever and careful. Now I've done dive bombing in 2019 once or twice and I didn't take anyone off but you know I've learned from it, uh, it was very close. Uh, but what I'm trying to say here is, uh, here I've learned to line people up. So there was a, a gentleman in a black GXXR, amazing fast guy, absolutely brilliant it was really quick and it took me I think three I, I've got some pictures here so three laps consistently out uh, I, I, I realized that uh, I'm you know exiting Edwina I was I was decent so I kind of lined him up and finally I managed to overtake him otherwise he was overtaking me left right center maybe he was fatigued maybe you never know but there were some really quick guys there was a, a gentleman in the orange uh, track bike uh, paints uh, Adam Parker painted uh, bike you you know who you are you were absolutely brilliant so a few quick guys yeah this thing I really learned uh, dead time was very important there and also lining up people and not really surprising them uh, like crazy or die bombing them line them up really for two three laps and just find that right moment because clever people will hear you coming 
and they will give you space. Uh, you know, it just it just that's how it works. When you when you are behind someone constantly, they know you are behind them unless they are completely not listening. Uh, that's why ear you know ear plugs are, are quite important as well because then you can hear engine noises more than just air buffering and stuff like that. So I really wanted to add this point. Now we move back to the normal video. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed that. So now it's time for the second last session. So I'll show you this quick lap and then we'll move on to the last session. Next time, next clip is the uh, last session of the day. Really want to show you one or two laps from that session. And then, very importantly, we'll hear from Mike the Spike Edwards coaching me on the last sector. And his words are golden. And that will be so handy for you guys. Now guys, you've seen a lot of the laps from a lot of the uh, sessions. Now, you must have noticed the trend. It's normally either one minute dead or maybe one minute one. So I was stuck on that one minute. Now, most of my laps were like one minute. If I read you my lap timer, it was just unreal. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one, one minute, one, one minute, one minute. It was just absolutely unbelievable. Now, I didn't have my lap timer working, so I, I didn't know what lap times I was doing. It's only when I came home with that GoPro GPS and I connected that to the Track Day Genius app, I then kind of knew I'm like oh my goodness me no matter how hard I tried I was stuck on one minute now this time I wanted to do something different so rather than uh, kind of showing you how the uh, track the genius app can help you this time let's get someone special 
on in the video and we'll do a full 45 minute video later in the week on this one but today is just a snapshot of lovely Mike the Spike Edwards now Mike has got a lot of experience on this particular circuit. Now, Mike has won various championships, whether it's historic racing, he's taken part in 400cc races, 600cc races. He's got a lot of experience, especially on that particular track. So I really wanted to get him involved. So Mike will give me a snapshot on that last tricky sector, which a lot of people struggle on. And if you're not getting out of that sector properly, you can lose a lot of time. So um, he said a lot of my... Kind of other bits were fine, but the last tech sector he really wanted to showcase in this particular mini footage. So I'm going to put this on, guys. Have a little bit of patience with me, please. Please, 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 because this is very interesting. And later on in the week, we will show you a full 45 minute video on this one. So hope you enjoy this. Hi, Abby. I've done a full length uh, online distance coaching session for you, it's about 45 minutes long. But here's a, a quick snapshot, uh, a sum up really, of some of the, the good and bad areas and things we need to work on and things we're pretty good at. Um, where I'm going to look at really is targeting the herping and the bus stop. Uh, the bus stop is an area where I think uh, we've got a bit of room to play with because the change of direction needs to be speeded up. Uh, and the why that needs to happen and where you're doing it and the advantages and disadvantages, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to come from an area really where I think you're pretty uh, really strong which is in the particular the straight line breaking into a corner and Mallory Park Airpin is a great one that. you're coming from a relatively high speed to straight line approach it's all about killing speed and arriving at the corner uh, let's watch the video first of all of you arriving um, and that'll give us an idea of what I'm talking about let's get back out the corner and the run down to the through the S's and down to the herb in itself. So that's got us down there. Shows the bikes moving around us, but just just about to start tipping into the corner, and that shows me the level of commitment you've got at that point, killing the speed. The wriggling is the bike being unsettled, carrying a lot of weight on the front wheel. And the tipping into the corner, you kind of back out the throttle, the back out of the brake there, and let the bike settle running into the corner. So the actual braking up to this point is uh, really strong. Manly Park Herpin is quite awkward to get the thing stopped because of the largely because of the little humps. There's about two little humps in the track, uh, sort of halfway between the herpin uh, and the exit uh, of the S's. It's essentially where there used to be a big tree, and I think where the tree roots were underneath the track, it's kind of pushed the trap up over the years. Thankfully the tree is gone now, but the humps are still there. Yay! Anyway, the herpin itself, there's a couple of ways to view the herpin really. Because you're, I think, in a perfect position on the approach at the sort of tipping point, what you've got here is you've got potential here is to utilise the full width of the track to turn into the herpin, which theoretically, if you've got your braking right into the, the apex, so you can keep trail braking right into, deep into the corner and walk the track because you've got a really good positive camera to help to get the bike stopped at that point, um, that will allow you potentially to have an exit over on the right hand side of the track. So let's go have a quick look at the um, overhead shot, which is the Google image. So um, let's get a bit of the drawing going here. Me pen out. So our approach into the hairpin, you've come uh, slightly wide, if anything, but no problem coming out of the S's. That gets us over on the right-hand side of the track, past the narrowest part, which is somewhere where the tree used to be, and that essentially gives you more or less a straight line approach to that late uh, sort of tipping into the corner. That potentially, if you if you can hang on to the brakes right to the apex can allow you to kill the speed off so you exit the chicane, exit the herpin should I say, as, as far over to the right as you can get away with. Tactically, if you're trying to get underneath somebody, uh, coming up the inside of them and basically just get underneath them, stop the bike, hold it in tight and make them run around the outside. That's a, a tactical way to sort of pass people into the herpin, but you've got to really commit about getting underneath them. Um, but what uh, that's the ideal position we need to be 
when we come out of the, the hairpin itself. I think possibly because you got a little unsettled just before you finally committed to the corner. When you did run in, you ran in, I think, with a, not quite enough brake, and as a result, you kind of came out and you were much further out in the track. Now, great approach, maybe lost a little bit because of the, it didn't hang on to the brakes, but that dramatically affects our entry into the, the bus stop. Now the bus stop's got three points of interest. You've got a little curve on the way in, you've got the slow point of the corner, which is the right uh, apex, and then you've got the left uh, uh, point of entry, the point of exit coming out. And that, that curve particularly really jumps out at you, uh, and something you've got to be aware of. But the slow point is without doubt the, the right. So if we can be over to the right of the track on the exit of the hairpin, that gives us a much more kind of straight line approach to get to that point as fast as possible. If we've come from essentially the left hand side of the track, as a, okay, you can, that, that you can be carrying maybe a bit more speed at that point, but essentially that gives us a completely different trajectory. We've got effectively a left hand bend to get round. Now you're always gonna have a bit of a left bend getting into the bus stop, but coming from the left hand side of the track, you're making it even harder on yourself. So that's the best place to start from. That gets us into this point as quick as you can. Now what I would suggest here is the pace going through the chicane is largely controlled by how fast you can get the bike to change direction. But the direction change needs to match the distance that you've got to play with, i.e. The, them three points, the left apex, the right apex, and the left apex coming out. They're fairly bunched together. So they're in time frame, they're going to happen quite quickly. So if you're going physically traveling through the, uh, the bus stop fast, you've got to get that speed, the rate of direction change really increase that. Now, I find the best way to do that is as you're running up and you're going into the left, when you're sort of approaching this part of the track, is to be kind of put weight on the peg so you're kind of quite light in the saddle. Don't sit like a sack of spuds, kind of carry your weight on, on your feet. And that way it allows you to transition on the bike really fast. You know, you can weight the pegs up, counter steer, and really force the bike in and force the bike right. You've got to be fairly, I don't want to use the word brutal, but you've got to be fairly agitated and really bang, bang, piff, paff, get the thing into the chicane, get it flipped right. And utilise that right-hand apex as the point that you slow to, and also the point that you accelerate from. Now what te what's happened on, on your particular line is when you run in there, on the line that you've gone in there, um, you're trying to carry plenty of speed, which is good, but because you, your direction change going left and then going right isn't fast enough, essentially you've got to this point in the track and the bike is essentially pointed out on the left-hand side of the apex, where if you can have done that transition from right uh, sorry, from left over to right, if you can speed that up, you can get a better trajectory from the apex of the right. You can get much uh, much more pointed out towards almost the middle of the track as opposed to be pointed to the left of the apex. And the, the benefit there is that you can, from the right, you can start accelerating from the right. Let's have a quick look at the actual, the onboard there. There we go. So let's get let us get us round the hairpin. So the, that, see how how sort of slow it was from the left over to the right, and we're now pointed, essentially, to the towards the arm code there. That's where we're pointed. If we'd have gone left. A more slightly later but a much quicker change of direction to the right we can be at the same point in the track now but our bike essentially we pointed over there which allows us now to start accelerating to that point but because at here now we're pointed in the wrong place you've got to wait for the bike to do some more of the turn and essentially what happens if we let the video run is because of that pause in time we have to wait for the bike to turn it's not until this point in time where you've actually picked the throttle up and start to drive out the corner. 
and essentially what we've done there is we've lost let's get back we've lost acceleration from this point all the way to there we're now essentially pointed St we're still having to point that way so we don't miss uh, so we miss the, the apex or that running over the curb bumping the curb we've all done it we've all run over that curb where if we could have done a tighter turn a much faster change of direction so we can be over on the right hand side of the track right and pointed basically out of the chicane at that right hander here we could be more or less pointed that way because we can be on our way going left as we pass the curb as opposed to sort of almost upright or even still turning right trying to get away from it so essentially that if you speed it up that change of direction you physically can get through the chicane a lot faster when we come out of the chicane I think you do a great job you, you punch the bike out the corner you do a couple of short shifts down the hill and then drive out to the straight so the exit of the corner uh, is, is a success this bit a bit of a nightmare we need to work on anyway I hope you enjoy the full session um, and give us some feedback when you do get it speak soon Hope you found that interesting guys now it's time to leave Mallory Park and I leave Mallory Park with a big smile because after three and a half years me going there it was a great success you know straight away you know I, I booked myself in the advanced group without any hesitation because I kind of have that confidence now um, you know to ca kind of carry that pace and speed and, and, and be okay with it and there were loads of amazing people that day on the track overtaking was brilliant safe beautiful so much to learn that day it's time to leave Mallory Park. I hope you found this video interesting. I'm going to leave you with some amazing footage of leaving Mallory Park in a reverse order. Uh, you will find this very interesting. So I kind of, I like to treat these track day vlogs as little films. So I hope you also enjoy it that way. That's why I always tell you to put these footages or films on TV so you really enjoy it. Uh, guys, let me know how you found this video in the comment section. If you think these videos are too long, please let me know as well. If you find them interesting, entertaining, let me know. Give me your feedback. If you like this video, please press like. When you press like, what happens? Other like-minded people, so other track day riders, other bikers will get a prompt on their YouTube about this video so they can watch it as well. It doesn't make me a millionaire. Honestly, it doesn't. Uh, secondly, if you want to see more videos like this or other videos, I'm going to do some variety of videos on this channel, not just track days. So you can subscribe to the channel if you really want to. That would be lovely. Now, take care, guys. Look after yourself. God bless. Mm -hmm.